Step inside my creative sanctuary as we explore the heart of my craft space, the cherished scrap box. It's more than furniture. It's the keeper of my tools and treasures, a piece so loved it was worth every moment of saving and has become a self-gifted symbol of Christmas joy. As we navigate through its compartments, you'll see how my storage solutions have evolved, always adapting to the ebb and flow of crafting demands. You've requested an in-depth tour and I'm thrilled to guide you through the nooks and crannies of my scrap box. To make it digestible, I've broken down the tour into bite-sized parts. So let's dive into part one of this organizational journey together and maybe you can find inspiration for taming the beautiful chaos of your own craft supplies. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Let's start at the very top of the scrap box. So the coffee pot that you see here is pure decoration. I didn't get it for my craft room specifically. I had it in my other apartment. I didn't know where to put it. I think it's very decorative, so it stays up there. Next to it are two mugs from the art journal festivals here in Vienna that I attended two consecutive rows. This year it's in Germany and I will not be attending. Then all these jars here, they're a mixture of various knickknacks. The one on the very right has lace scraps and the one next to it has very special buttons. And next to that, I have a beautiful vintage book press. And I know you're going to want to see that, so I'll show you that now. So I had been looking for a vintage book press for many years. Finally found one on Wilhaben, which is a site similar to Craigslist, I guess. So it's a site where you can buy used things. And I was so lucky to find this. I believe I paid 60 euros for it. It's quite big. You can twist these off. So if you want to add something to press, you have to raise these. Then you can lift this plate and put your book or whatever you want to press underneath. And then lower these again to tighten them and to actually press your book or something. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know when it was made, where it was made. There was no information like that, unfortunately. The worms have gotten into it a little bit. There are quite a few <laughs> holes all over, but it's okay. I don't think they're still in it. So I don't think this will deteriorate over time. So then we have this table element right here. So the metal legs on the bottom, they fold in. The whole table piece folds down and then you can close the whole closet. So these doors fold in and if you have the table folded in as well, then you can also fold in these pieces so they move as well. But I never do that. For me, this is always open. So let's move on to the top left of that door. This is my favorite part of the whole craft closet because it is so beautifully organized. It's such eye candy. This makes me smile every time I look at it. So on the very top shelf are my Distress Mica Stains, which are my most recent purchase of all of these. Then we have two rows of Distress Oxide Sprays except for the Distress Spray Stain Picket Fence, which didn't fit on the fourth row where my other Distress Spray Stains are. I don't have a lot of those. And next to it are the Distress Stain Daubers, which have been discontinued quite a while ago. So that is my pride and joy. If I expand this collection, I don't know what to do because <laughs> I don't have any more space there. I don't have any more shelves like this. So that's kind of what's keeping me from buying a lot of these Distress Oxide Sprays and Spray Stains. I love them a lot. I love using them with stencils. But maybe it's a good thing because I also get overwhelmed by the amount of things I have. So maybe it's good that this kind of keeps me in check a little bit. <laughs> Moving to the middle section of my door, I have all kinds of tools. There are three compartments up here. 
which are great for storing things like my craft knife, some hole punches, some water brushes, things like that. And underneath you can see there are six hooks, which are perfect for hanging scissors, for example. And underneath I just have two corner rounder punches and my crocodile. And on the lower part of my door, I have my Distress Oxide refillers, some alcohol inks. Underneath, I have some baby wipes, <laughs> two punches that didn't fit anywhere else, which really don't go there, but I don't know where else to put them. And as you can see on the bottom, I have this huge clear bag, which sticks to the door because the door has some felt on it and the bag sticks on it with velcro and these bags came with the scrap box there's a whole bunch more that are on the other door and in it you see i have some doilies which i haven't used in about 100 years i feel like <laughs> i should use those at some point moving on to the top part of the larger part of the door so this is the part that you could fold in this top part is very random I have some clear plastic sheets that I have cut off of calendars which serve as palettes for paint and I have this random wooden box which I think I'm going to throw away now because I've had it for a few years and I'm not using it I thought I could use it to store small bits of something to keep them separate but obviously i'm not doing that so i think i'll get rid of this one happy for every piece i can get rid of so let's take this box out and have a closer look see these things then fall over so that's not great storage as you can see this box is overflowing it's really not a great <laughs> system on top here i have all my wax seal utensils and wax palettes and the wax stamps. There's some really cute ones in here. I wish I had a better place for this, but at the moment I do not. These were in a drawer, which I needed for something else. Next, I have this box which is actually a horrible looking box, but it has the perfect shape for my beloved Carandage water soluble wax pastels. I also have my pastel chalks here, which I rarely use and need to use more often. I have this cute travel set of more Carandage water soluble wax pastels. I have been gifted these Prismacolor watercolor pencils. Currently don't use these a lot either, although I would never get rid of these. Some oil pastels, which I don't use a lot, but again, would never get rid of. We have a broken rubber band, very handy. <laughs> This is a super old box. I think I got this from my dad. Definitely very vintage. And this just has some tools for linoleum cutting and stamping inside. Don't know if I'll ever use them. Don't know if this is the best use for the box. I have this very cute calendar, which is an artist almanac from 2022. I was gifted this. I have not used it enough. It has such beautiful artwork. You can't see. Love these so much. Should incorporate them more in my journals and planners. Always forget about them. I'm not sure where these are from. Here's a list of contributing artists. I think these were sold via an Instagram account two years ago, but I unfortunately don't have more information on them. Maybe you can search for this online if you're really interested. Artist Almanac. Not sure if they still make them. And then I have a random bottle of coffee for paper dyeing in here. Hmm. Interesting that that has not gone bad because that's been in here probably about a year without any cooling. 
So a very random box. And by the way, the reason I don't use these anymore is because I got the Tim Holtz Tonic Studio glass mat, which also has this mixed media pad on the side where I would now put my paints. So actually I don't need these anymore. I should get rid of them. What's the point? And then up here I have some glue refills, PVA glue art glitter glue which is almost empty and i need to reorder i love getting these 16 ounce or 480 milliliter big bottles to refill my small one much more economical obviously i have a spray fixative here this is my beloved colal all-purpose glue i also get that in large containers because obviously it's much cheaper this is what i put in my three in one bottle this beacon bottle because it is exactly the same thing but in europe this is a lot cheaper than the three in one glue then i have this repositionable mounting spray i have spray glue i have a tiny bit of this permanent black editing spray which i actually wanted to declutter but then i didn't because i thought I need to use this because actually it's really great and now i have a balcony because this has a very strong smell and it's fine on a balcony i also have an acrylic spray in white which i love and finally i have this bottle of plant glycerin which i might use for something at some point <laughs> not getting rid of it originally i got it to make my own jelly plate which i never did so now this slides in and out easily without being hindered by the other things that were in here so yay next again we have a very random drawer by the way, all of the acrylic drawers that are in here came with the scrap box. I think I had to pay a little bit extra for these drawers, but you have to keep in mind this was years ago, so maybe they have changed things now. But with the standard price of the scrap box, you got some fabric drawers, but I really wanted these acrylic ones. So I invested in the upgrade and I have never regretted it since. So as you can see here, it's a mishmash of everything. This is my largest punch, which does not fit anywhere else but i don't want to get rid of it because it has some great shapes i have some paint which has <laughs> dried out so i might as well not store this in here i have this adorable box made for me by my dear friend louise heinzel it says here im notfall scheibe einschlagen in case of emergency break the glass <laughs> And inside, as you can see, I keep some hole reinforcements. And I have another adorable box made by my dear friend Maud. And in here I have some stamp carving tools. Probably I should add my linoleum stamp tools in here as well. That seems like it would make so much sense. I have these glittery rhinestones which obviously didn't have any place anywhere else. So I put them in here. There is a lot. I haven't used these in a while either. See, these are things I forget about because they're in random places and then I don't use them. This is another box I think I got from Louisa. And inside I have random metal pieces that, ooh, there's some book corners. I might use these for my memory book project. I will keep these out. See, I forget what I have. Random metal things that I think I'm going to use in something and then never do. Adorable box I bought at some random shop here in Vienna. Inside, I keep all of my fabric washi tape. Love these. Haven't used them in probably years because I forget about them because they're in this box, in this random drawer. These are two more which are too big to fit in here. I should just cut them down to make them fit because I don't think I would ever use them as a large piece like this. This is something I really treasure. It's a roll for art supplies. It's by Creta Color. And it rolls out like this. So these are all my good drawing pencils, shading pencils, blending stumps, things like that. 
love this a lot and then at the end here it has a pencil case that you can take off and inside what do i have oh i have a soft cloth a kneading eraser oh here it is i was always wondering where this is oh my goodness and uh, for sharpening pencils haven't been drawing but if i want to this is what i will pull out great for traveling as well and then here i have all of my stamp making print blocks various sizes here also some wooden blocks to mount the smaller ones on so you would carve these and then they have backing that you can take off and just stick onto the block and make your own stamps I've been meaning to do that for a long time. And lastly, I have these two paper rolls, which came from a Goodwill. Next, let's go through these two drawers. This is again, a pretty random one. On top here, because it doesn't really go in, it's too tall. I have this Sizzix foam pad, which is meant for shaping paper. It goes with these tools that I have in my door. I've actually never used it before. Then in front here, I have various tools. Usually there's more in here. I have some tools for like beading, jewelry making. I have this cool wheel here, punctures, which I was gifted, love this. This one is also for jewelry making for crimping beads. Oh my goodness, I've been looking for this. This is a ring to use. Instead of using pliers to open and close jump rings, you do it with this one. I've actually never used it because I could never find this after I bought it. So now I know it's in here. Totally makes sense in here with the other jewelry making tools. Then I have these for hole making. It's a double cap rivet tool. Obviously, I've never used it. And I also have these hole making tools. And this is a tiny little mat for using these kind of hole making things on. More foam for all sorts of purposes. This is the one I usually use when I make holes in my signatures. This here is actually a container made for storing halves of lemons or onions. And inside here, I have some baby powder in a nylon. This is, of course, for embossing so that your embossing powder doesn't stick everywhere. Then I have this handy tool to cover up an address. You just roll it over your address. And then I have some tape here for my little label maker, which is currently in my kitchen because I have been reorganizing my spices. <laughs> and in the back here are some things actually I can also get rid of. Uh, this is a piece of candle that I always keep in case pages stick together, especially with acrylic paint. You just rub the candle over those parts and they're good to go. These I bought in the Netherlands last year. I was so happy to find these because I thought they would be great to replace my mica stain nozzles when they clog up. And I didn't even notice that these are Dyna Wakely and they do not fit the Tim Holtz mica stain bottles. So I have these, but I don't have any bottles that fit to them. Great job. Then I have some makeup sponges for mixed media. I have this beautiful coaster to make wax seals on random lids. These are great for mark making. There's another one. And some beautiful wax to wax threads for book binding. In this one, I have various tools like brayers. I think I have four different kinds of brayers. I have some sponge brushes a burnishing tool for my jelly plate, spatulas and things like that. This drawer holds various tapes, masking tapes, book binding tapes, double-sided tapes, things like that. Not very exciting, but very useful. This is my drawer of lace, which is also kind of overflowing. I just got some of these recently at a flea market. This one, this one, and this one with the swans. I've used this recently in a video of making digitals your own. This is another beautiful flea market find 
from last year love this one a lot yeah and these are all the ones that i've had they are still beautifully organized i organized these about two years ago when i when i decluttered my supplies very proud that this is still like that but these here of course are not a great solution to just keep on top here i need to figure something out i don't have enough space on the next shelf i have my glue drawer how can one person have so many different glues <laughs> I have a whole video on which glue I use for what and why, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. There's also a Kolal book binding glue here, which is really good. I obviously have backups here as well. Tacky glue from Action. My beloved textile glue from Action, which no longer is available. I still have not given up hope that it will come back someday. I don't have a substitute for it. I like having a white glue for textile glue. I do not like the three in one or the Kolal all purpose glue to glue fabric because this one I can water down and spread very easily on my fabric. And it was super cheap. So I'm really sad about that. This is a drawer of random mediums. I have some rusty powder which I bought and don't really have an idea how to use well. I have looked up some videos and tried what they were doing but I'm never able to get the results like they show. I have some heavy gel medium by Amsterdam which is unfortunately glossy which I didn't realize when I bought it. I have some transparent gesso by Amsterdam. I have other kinds of clear gesso, matte medium, white gesso, white gesso, crackled accents, which I'm very much challenged in using. Never get the result I want. And in front here, I apparently have some glycerin mixed with water. Don't remember what I used that for. Moving further down, I have this drawer which has all kinds of flowers, petals, more flowers, some wooden elements, little wooden birds, and these adorable pine cones, and some metal embellishments like metal plates, other embellishments, these doorknobs which are great for journal cover. I have been hoarding these. These are absolutely gorgeous. Hoarding some rhinestones and some stickers actually, which look like metal. On top here, I have this little container of metal elements and large eyelets. And in here I have all my boxes for charms, sequins, rhinestones, things like that. In front here I have different kinds of wires and some magnets. In this drawer I have all kinds of texture paste, crackle mediums, frosted crystal here, more texture paste. I also have a matte medium in here and a container with eggshells <laughs> for texture. And this one here has two different glue guns, two heat guns and some glue sticks for the glue guns. Second to last shelf, acrylic paints. I have three shells of acrylic paints and they are overflowing. One, two, and three. And finally on the bottom here, I have my two containers with embroidery thread. I have these which are mostly still intact. And then I have these where I only have little bits left over, which I store like this. Moving back to the top of this part of the door, we have these narrow drawers. This one, as you can see, is partially empty and it holds my perfect pearls. I should maybe also donate these because I don't use them. On this shelf, I have all of my handmade stamps. Love these, probably not the best way to store them. These next two are for buttons.
In this one, I have my small punches. Also, probably not the ideal place to store them. And in this one, I have all of my calligraphy pens. Moving further down, I have two drawers for embossing. Oh, and I also have some binder clips here, which are always practical. So here I have my embossing stamp pad, my embossing dauber, and my embossing pens. And in this one, I have my embossing glazes on one side and my embossing powders on the other side. In this one, I have my stamp pads. I have reduced these already a lot. There's probably still too many. These are inks. Again, this drawer is too full, not very organized. This is a mix of acrylic and watercolor inks. I have been gifted these. Second to last drawer has my gilding waxes. Haven't used those in a while either. And finally, my high fluid acrylic inks by Golden, which I love a lot. They're very expensive and I should use them more. So we've done the whole left door here, top to bottom. So now let's do from this middle part here, this row right there. This one is kind of hard to explain. <laughs> Let me show you. Actually, maybe not that hard to explain. I have a mixture of things in here, but they are all nature related. So things like synthetic leaves, dried leaves, dried petals, bark from a palm tree, but also nature related papers, things like that. Oh, and also totally not nature related things, which totally don't go in here. I'm not sure why they're in here at all. So I should probably go through this drawer and uh, only have nature things in here. Underneath that drawer is my drawer where I used to keep all of my stencils. If you've been following my channel, you will have seen several stencil organization videos. I now have a different system. They are in a playlist that I have linked below this video, which is dedicated to all my craft supply organization. So if you want to see my current solution, check those out. I still have the packaging in here and many of you have suggested to digitalize these. Still contemplating that. The next drawer down is where I keep my beautiful vintage doilies. I love these a lot. Some of them I have cut into. Most of these are still whole. I really, really treasure these. In this next one, I have a mixture of, I would say rustic fabrics. So fabrics I've dyed myself. This is also where I keep my cheesecloth and random nettings, like from fruit or from potatoes from the supermarket. <laughs> some felt. Another drawer I love, this has all of my fabric scraps. Love digging through this. I have decluttered this several times so that I only have fabrics in here that I would enjoy using. But actually looking at this now, I think I can declutter again. No matter how many times I declutter, it just gets full and full because of course, every time I use a new fabric and I get new scraps, they go in here. And I guess I don't use them fast enough. <laughs> this next drawer is full of different fibers. I love these eyelash trims they are very fuzzy and soft and there's also these kind which aren't as soft but have these very very long eyelash parts i have these which are super fun and i have some starry silk ribbon down there this is again kind of a weird mixture i have some acrylic inks by amsterdam which i love dearly I used to have them in the door where I have my distress 
sprays but there's no more room so i have to put them here which is why i forget about them not good i have some duplicates of distress stain daubers of a distress mica stain and i have these small distress inks which i'm not a fan of because i feel they dry out a lot quicker but i also got this last year it's a distress refresher which is for inks, markers, and paint. I have tried this on an ink pad and it works really well. And back here I have some extra makeup brushes for my Distress Oxides and inks. And finally, this is the last drawer in that row, all my punches, which are like medium size. And that wraps up part one of my tour th through the dynamic world of my scrap box, my creative command center. I hope this glimpse has sparked some ideas for your own craft space. Stay tuned for more organizational insights and crafty adventures. Love you guys! Mwah, mwah.